Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning at Washington University. This is Module 1, Part 3, Introduction to Python. In this uh, class session, I'm going to show you more about the Python programming language, just a brief introduction to it. And then the next module, we're going to look at Python for machine learning. And at that point, we've covered the preliminaries of Python and we'll get right into TensorFlow and Keras. Most of the course material that I am going to present, we will make use of, of, of um, Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are a good way to execute Python code and, and, and run it. You can see here I have the course GitHub repository downloaded. This is if you want to run any of the examples in your own Jupyter Notebook, you can basically just go into there and you'll find all of the various modules and my data directory that has the data that you need to run some of these. What we're going to do now though is just show you how to create a Jupyter Notebook completely of your own that is, that is separate from any of that. So you'll click on New. You'll want to create Python 3. Now if you don't see Python 3, then you probably didn't install something, something correctly. So I've created Python 3. You'll notice it opened a new tab in my browser. So I now have an untitled uh, notebook. You're allowed to rename those, so I'm just going to rename this to Python module 1 Python intro. Okay, now it's got its new name. You can see here, we still have the file browser on the other tab, and we can see that we have the IPYNB, so that's the Python notebook file that we have. Now Python, as a programming language, you can, in Jupyter Notebook, you can print Hello World. That's where you always start with a programming language. And then you can run that. These are cells, so I printed hello world, and it, it outputs it. So in Python, functions always have uh, parentheses that go around them, and strings always have quotes. You can have single quotes, or you can have, uh, you can have double quotes like I have here. You can also do, there is absolutely no difference between these. It's not like other programming languages where maybe single quote is for a character. And you can see I keep adding additional cells here as I, as I add to it. I could have put both of these in the same one and rerun it and it would say hello world, hello world twice. Python also has variables. So I can do i equals 5 and run it. Now there's no output from that. If you wanted to print it out, you could do print. Um, the way that I usually recommend printing these is if you, um, you can, if you have just one value, you can just print i and it'll print it out. You can print pretty much any object that you want to in Python like that and it'll try to dump it. But if you try to do something like the value of i is, in a lot of languages you'll do something like, you'll do something like that, that gives you a type error because you're trying to add a string to an integer and Python doesn't, doesn't like that. So what you end up doing usually is just putting in two curly braces, at least this is my recommendation. There's a bunch of ways to do that, dot format. And you put in i, whatever you want to print. Now you can mix the string and text together like this. You can put as many of these in here as you want to. You can put additional curly braces. You can also put formatting information between the curly braces, but um, I won't get into that. You can look on, on the documentation for Python for that. So now I put in three variables, so it'll print out all three of those. 
it is very important that the number of curly braces and the number of things that you have here match or you're going to get an error. It is also important to realize that the cells, the values carry down. So if I do print, print i here, even though it's a different cell, I'm going to get a value of 5. So in some of the course notes, I will put preliminary functions near the top, and you need to run those. So if you're getting errors, make sure that you have run the values before, because just because I have I defined up here, if I do kernel and I restart my kernel, which means I've effectively rebooted Python in the background, and I go right down here and I try to print I, I'm going to get an error because I has not been defined. And you'll notice it starts over with a one here. This lets you know that I've sort of rebooted this kernel, and now you're, these, these kernel numbers are counting. Later on, when we give Python more intensive stuff to do, you'll see stars here. Star means that it's, it's currently processing. When it's done, it'll give it a run number. So we can now uh, run that, run that, and we have, we have the five again. Python also supports um, if statements. And this gets into how Python uses, uses, defines blocks. So if I, is equal to 5. You have to do double equal. Single equal means assigned to. Double equal means equal to. If i equals 5, then print i is 5. So if we run that, it is going to print i equals 5. Now this shows a very important aspect of the Python programming language. I didn't use curly braces or begin end or any other way to, de to denote this, this block. You use white space. And that is a feature that annoys certain people about Python, that white space is truly important. In many languages, white space is not. Um, I found this a little strange at first, but it's, it's just the way that the programming language works. Now you can use tabs. I used a tab there, or you can use spaces. There I just did two spaces. It also works just as well. If you really want things to not work well, use tabs and spaces. Don't use both. That's, that's bad. So I will typically use tabs for this. And if you were to do another, another check, like if i equals 6, this would be impossible. For, for it to print out both of these, I would have to be simultaneously uh, uh, 5 and, and 6. So since we don't have um, that capability, this inner if statement would never happen. Now if I made i equal to, equal to 6, it's still not going to print anything, uh, largely because you're going to, you're going to just... Um, you're never going to get into this this loop to make it through to the inner loop. So it stops right here. It never gets into that part. Okay, so that is how you create um, if statements. You can also create functions in Python. Very important to create functions for uh, for programs. So I am going to define mult x comma y. So that takes two parameters. And notice Python is typeless. You're not telling it if these two types are ints or strings or whatever. I'm simply going to return x times y. So that multiplies them by each other. And you can print mult 5 comma 2. So that'll multiply 5 by 2. And you'll get 10. So that's very much just the the um, the introduction to the, the very the very basics of of the language. What's really powerful, though, about Python is you can express lists and dictionaries or hash tables, if you want to call them that, right in code. So in Python, you can do if you want a list of five numbers, you could do 
LST equals one comma two three. And now you have a list of three numbers. If you print out that list, it's just going to print out that same list. You can also add to it in real time, list.append for, now we've added to it, and if we were to print out list, we are going to see that we have that fourth number in there. So you can, you can basically add and remove numbers from those lists at will. You can make your lists fairly, um, uh, fairly complex. You can have a list that includes another list. So you can do LST equals one, two, three, comma, one, two. So now you have a list and a list. And you can see, we didn't just add those two together. We had, uh, we actually uh, created a list within a list. You can add lists together, and that's very handy. We will use this in the course. And we run that. If we print LSD3, you can see that they're concatenated together. It's not like it literally made a list that contained list one and list two. What we will do in, in this course frequently is create multi-dimensional lists. So you could create list equals And you can see this is a two-dimensional list. It's a list of lists, which is a two-dimensional list. You can get access to individual parts of it by doing So that gets the first element of the list, which happens to be a list. If you want to drill down into one specific value of it, that gets you the first value. So you defined a, a three by three matrix sort of construct and you, you got down to the individual value. You can also do three dimensional uh, ones and we will do this when we get into time series. And now you have a three-dimensional three-dimensional list. You can get an individual value by this. And notice Python is zero-based, meaning arrays start at zero, not at one, like some programming languages, like R, for example. So that shows you how you can get access to this. We will very much use this structure when we get into time series. So it's important to know how to construct these values. You can also create dictionaries. A dictionary is something like this, and we will use these from time to time. So here we have name, Jeff, color, red. Oh, and I, I did something potentially bad. I created two values with the same, you never want to do that. You can't have two entries in the encyclopedia, well actually you can for the same for the same value, but if you if you do put in two values for the same, uh, so you call these the keys, so if you put in name equals value and the name equals Jeff, one of those is going to overwrite the other one. Typically you won't want to do that, so let's let's not do that. You can access, and then let me run that, you can access individual values by doing print dict name. And it tells you value. You could put any one that you wanted to in there. You can also If you want a list of all of the keys, that can be done by this.
Notice it gives it to you as a type of, of um, dictionary keys. You can also convert that into just a normal list. In Python, that's how you typecast. You just put the word of the type that you want and you can run that. And now we have that. You can also get very complicated with hash maps and, or, or dictionaries as they're usually called and lists together. Consider this. Okay, there I defined a fairly complicated nesting of dictionaries and lists together. One thing that's neat about this is you might have heard of a, a encoding called JSON, JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. This is actually JSON. So this is a encoding of data that gives me basically my uh, name as an instructor and then the classes that I'm teaching. So I'm only teaching this one, oops, that's bad. So I'm only teaching this one class, so that list only has one dictionary in it, but that dictionary has fields describing it. So you can get access to these individual pieces of it by print, If I print out the name, it's going to give me my name. If I print out the classes, it gives me my classes. If I print out zero, it gives me just the information on my first class. And then I can get the name. Keep learning. By the way, you can keep digging deeper. What do you think that would give me? Would it be an error? Actually, it won't be. D, that's the first letter. So you can index into strings using arrays, and then that would be the second letter. So this is very handy when you need to parse um, JSON. There are utilities, we will see one of them later, that basically will take JSON, because often the data that you want to analyze comes in this form, and you can pull that in and access individual pieces just like this. The last thing I want to show you with just the Python introduction is how to loop. So if you wanted to just count from 1 to 10, you can't have an intro without this. There you see it counts from 0 to, uh, 0 to 10. If you wanted to count within a specific range and you wanted not to do zero, just put the start in there. And it's very important to note, it always stops one shy of what you actually gave it. The other way that you'll loop that is very common is if you create a list. So say you have some sort of a list. You can loop over the list. We will use that a number of times through this, through this course. So this is the very introduction to the Python programming language. In the next module, we will get into using Python for machine learning and we'll build largely upon what we just did here.